Pugnacia, one of our most fun overhaul mods out there, and a big favorite among many. It's been one of my most requested mods to play, so here we are, but with a twist. There are a few elements of surprise, like the dubstep penguin with an AK down to the enormous leech. A roaming dangerous plant that will whip you until you die, and then we have the daunting German Gander as the final boss. I have 100 days to beat it, but if that wasn't hard enough, I will have a few goals I need to do in order to beat these 100 days. By day 15, I have to put down an ascension portal that will allow all of the bosses to roam around the world freely. By day 40, I will have to defeat my first roaming world boss, and then by day 75, I will have to kill the last remaining boss of Pugnacia, which is an oversized hippopotamus. Before we start, I would like to shout out to these content creators for inspiring me to make our content too. If you do enjoy any of this content, please hit that subscribe button and the like button and let's go. Finally, we are back again. Starting out on the beach, a uh, swamp, as an ogre, scratching my arm with this weird implant for the 6900th time. Gathering some resources for some starter tools? No? You don't have to gather stuff for starter tools since you spawn in with them. Then I went looking around the environment to see if it was safe and I named my tribe Plucka Duck. I made myself a foundation and a box so I can store stuff because eventually I will be a thick AF boy. Then I went out looking for some dodos to kill for some hides so I could have at least a bed. I was being chased by a pack of sheep and a nameless? What the heck? A little bit later I was inspecting a Fiomia having a massive crap. I wanted to see if I could kill them and I didn't realize they would attack back. I decided to spawn in the tropical area instead so I could find some dodos to kill for an easy bed. So back gathering stuff again like usual. I found a trike I could passively tame but I had to hit level 20 so I just ran around and farmed for a bit instead. I stumbled upon a Moshaps that wanted major berries but it was so damn slow on taming so I literally gave up. Then I found myself a harmless slicer that I finally killed for some hide. Now since I had a hide I could make a temp base with a bed now so I didn't have to spawn all over the place. I crafted a bow and arrow and then I was ready to take on some heavier dinos since I had a ranged weapon. That Moshops was a greedy little bitch, so I decided it was time to kill it. After like 100 arrows he went down, but then some Pegamastax wanted to fight me. Day 2, still trying to kill this Pegamastax, but it was just too strong and I just went to harvest the rest of the body instead. I made myself a bowler and was gonna try to kill his Pegamastax, but it felt literally pointless. I was in need of a spyglass so I could figure out what HP this Pegamastax really had. I made myself a spyglass and some souls also. The Pegomastix was back. He almost killed me but I got away and then I used my spyglass to see his health. He had frigging 3800 health. Bruh. I made a couple of wood foundations, upgraded the base and hit level 20 so I could tame the trike. Then I started taming the trike with some berries. It was slow but not horrible, but I had a spectator who wanted to join in on the fun. It was the Pegomastix again. I bowled it multiple times so I could tame the trike in peace, but I got caught in one of his attacks so I died. Now <laughs> fun! After that I went back to my body to recover my gear. Then I continued feeding the trike and then he eventually became mine. I named the trike Neon after a friend. I sent Neon to attack the Pigomastix immediately, so I could get some hide and make a saddle for Neon. I went for farming run and weirdly enough, Neon can also harvest stone. I just want to explain something quickly here for people who haven't played Pugnacia before. Lots of creatures have their own niches where they farm other resources typically from vanilla creatures. There are a bunch of them you can use as a structure to craft or use with their own specialty. I went out for a lot of metal so I could eventually make myself some metal tools and a crossbow. I saw a zombie baryonyx and I took it out, and once you kill them you get their brains that can be used to tame your own zombie variant. And yes, the tri can also harvest corpses. Then I went back to base and I started melting a bunch of metal for a smithy and I also made some narcotics. Afterwards I went out and I farmed a bunch of crystal, because I was eventually gonna need it. I saw one of these Pikachu and Titanosaur and took it out, 
I don't know what they were used for aside from building on. Day 3, I went out for a bit and then I came across a walking fridge. This turtle does a frost breath attack and can also be used as a fridge. I then found one of these prodigious Lystros that are pretty cool, which has to use for doing backflips on. Then I made a good amount of narcotics, which I will need in order to craft those new Pugnacia arrows, which are twice as good as vanilla. I made about 100 arrows that would probably be sufficient for my terrible aim. Then I also made a Pugnacia smithy, which you basically need to craft in order to make the ascension portal. I went out scouting for dinos and I found myself a pterodon and I proceeded to not get out. I saw another high level one in the distance and I was gonna see if I could try taming it too. I saw this arc over by the water and it will probably help with taming if I got some prime. I saw one of these conflagrant frogs that work as a mobile chemistry bench, but it had some company around the area, so I had to clear them out. Then a bolad knocked out and fed this frogger. I left it up to tame. Well, I still needed some prime for the bird, so I went to take on a conflagrant spino. He almost killed Neon, but I didn't give up. I went over to the pterodon and gave it some prime meat and left it to tame up. Then I went over to the frog because it got finally tamed. I named him Gappy. Then it was time to try out Gappy's capability of crafting stuff. I must say, I was very impressed. While I was skipping around, I flew over a water jug bug which can be used as a backpack. Nothing fancy really. I noticed that one of the pterodons were no longer on the scanner, so I thought he woke up. I went over there and I just found a death bag. But what killed it? Then I saw the murderer and I took that stupid capper out on my guppy. I went over to the other pterodon and I named him Transport because he was gonna carry everything to my new permanent base location I had planned on moving to. Before I started moving I wanted to grab a few more crystal before I had to go. Then I saw a pretty high level Parasaur that you can passively tame but I knocked it out like the default way. The Parasaur can however pick up stuff from the ground like a human so that was quite unique. And if you've seen my other series, I don't stick around waiting for Dino to tame up. I usually just leave them. Hey, that's a pretty cool, neat looking backpack. Okay, enough messing around. It was finally time to go and check out my new base location to see if it was safe. Yeah, it looked pretty safe to me. On my way back to the base, I picked up a few drops on the way. And I came across a 754 Kampan bow. You can also use the Pagnesia arrows with any bow or crossbow, because they are universal. Day 4, so we finally arrived at the new permanent base location and we started placing down a couple of foundations as a start. I made one of these corpse retrievers in the Pagnesia smithy, which is exactly what it says. It has the same design as the awesome teleporter, if you guys have played with that mod before. I was taking a break from base building and I went over to my tame Parasaur and picked him up, which I named Wheezy back at base. I equipped Wheezy with the saddle and I cleared the area notch. Day 5. I was out looking for Nanki that would be really neat for some metal farming. I found two and I knocked them out and I left them there to be tamed up. I was being baited by a red drop and then I saw this Thanksgiving ancient turkey which can shoot missiles out of his butt. I didn't want to mess with that Thanksgiving dinner just yet. Back at base, I wanted to make myself a harpoon gun so I could use the projectile nets, but I was still waiting for metal to be melted, so I went out and farmed some metal in the meantime. So I got back to the base and I dropped off the metal, but we were still lacking on ingots so I could make a fabricator. So then I flew over the lake and I saw this conflagrant rex, which can apparently make jerky in its inventory. I was gonna attempt to knock it out, because having a proper meat eater would help me severely. I saw a magmasaur nest in the middle of nowhere, so I joined the egg while the mom was busy defending her nest. There was also a conflagrant doeed and an anki in the area, so I decided to knock him out. I gave them each my matron berries and I left them there to tame up. Day 6, I started a new day by going out and searching for a high level spino. After checking a few errors, I found one and I proceeded to knock it out. A little bit later, the Rex finally tamed up, so I saddled her up and went on a killing spree. 
Then, not too far away, I saw a lonely griffin who wanted to become friends, so I knocked her out and gave her my meat. I continued my round and went on and killed a few more dinos. I came across a male griffin, which would be excellent for my lonely girl griffin that was just taming up. So I knocked it out, gave it my meat and left it to tame up. I went over to the spino and I gave it some meat since I was zooming around on the wrecks looking for trouble. Then a little bit later, I took my wheezy out to the otter pond to farm some silica pearls and I alerted all of the otters that I was there to collect all of the pearls. The otters tried rebelling against me but they stood no chance for the mighty rex. That was a lot of otters and now most of the lag is gone. Man hallo, hur många ska det vara? Day 7. I started out the new day by making myself ghrelin tonic. It will basically make the dinos starve so they can eat faster. On this new day I went and picked up my conflagrant Anki and named it Metalman. Then I also picked up the Doed, who was chewing quite loudly. I named him Spin to Win. Since I had a tonic I went over to the Spino so she could be tamed up already. Then right before she's about to be tamed up, a crab crept up on the Spino and ruined the taming efficiency just at the last second. Afterwards, I went over and picked up the griffins, which I will force them to make a baby for me, so that I can have an imprinted griffin eventually. Then I took out Metal Man out for a spin to try him out, and you know what, I was actually surprised how much he farmed. Why can't they be this good in Vanilla Ark? Day 8. I wanted to expand my base a bit, so I started making these S plus wagers, which is a bit expensive, but it will do for now as a base. I took most of the base down in order for me to place down the wedges. Then I placed down the terminal, I will use it for egg production and poop as well. Then I also made a fabricator that I will be using to making electronics eventually. After taking a break from building, I took my pterodon out to the island where it spawns oil and I farmed some. Base progress was still being made as of today. Then I almost forgot to give myself a fresh new haircut. Jeez. Day 9. The building mode was still being continued, but this time I made a greenhouse with one of my favorite designs that I usually don't have the energy for. Since I was making a greenhouse, I had to go and farm some crystals, so I took my Anki out for a spin. I continued until day 10. Day 10. Now it was finally time to put down an ascension portal and let the bosses spawn into the world. We had a custom set up so about 4 bosses spawn every half an hour. Then bright and early in the morning I continued working on the greenhouse since I needed a lot of narcobars for tranquilizers. I finished up the rest of the greenhouse and it was now done and ready. Then I took a break to go out into the world and I saw one of these easter bunnies which can automatically produce kibble if paired with an overaptor and a moralotops. I decided not to go for this route since this will make kibble kinda pointless and what was the point of making the greenhouse then? I went for a conflagrant maywing though since they can be used as a wireless generator. I net gunned it, knocked it out with one arrow, gave it a tonic and some meat tamed him up and named him Duckachu. It's literally a Pikachu but with a duck face. I threw out my Duckachu and let him power my fabricator. It definitely has some interesting bond effects when powered on. I was giving my base a couple of walls and a rooftop to end day 10 with. Day 11. I started out on a fresh beautiful morning by grabbing a bunch of poop so I could tame myself a dung beetle for that easy thermal fertilizer. I couldn't find things. any dung beetles so I went back to base to make myself a fridge. I didn't want the turtle because it's gonna be kinda weird if the turtle is starting to eat everything when he is the fridge. I made myself the CKF sci-fi table so I can make myself a generator. Apparently when the server does restart, then the Maywing shut down sometimes and you have to re-enable its power and I didn't wanna do that all the time. Then I went out and I found a dung beetle. I gave it some poop and I picked it up. I didn't find any more dung beetles so I went flying around my base area for a bit. 
Then I came across this gorgeous looking griffin that I wanted to give Akisa. I knocked it out, fed it and left it up to be tamed. I went out looking for this Pheomia since they can produce a massive amount of I knocked these two out and fed them and tamed them. Then I picked them up and went back to base to make myself a new terminal that will solely be used for making fertilizer. Then I made myself the CKF Sci-Fi Wireless Generator with its powered junctions, placed them out and then I had power all over my base. Whatever. I wanted a bunch of gunpowder so I could make some pugnacia darts, but I was lacking on charcoal, like a lot. Day 12. I went out scouting for a conflagrant mammoth which can burn wood into charcoal extremely fast. Then I found myself a mammoth, I proceeded to trap it, knock it out, I gave it some bears and left him up to tame. I flew over to the griffin to pick it up instead since it had been tamed up by now. A dame came across a Jerbob Ross, but he was not safe in this area so I grabbed him with my griffin and I took him back to my base where he could be tamed up in peace. A little bit later I found one of these prodigious Jerbaska that was kinda cute so I knocked it out, gave it some berries and left it up to be tamed. I met and I tribed up with Akisa who just joined the server. She wanted to build for me in this series. But that took forever. I found a big snail which could produce some paste, I tried passively feeding it the cake but it wouldn't accept it so I knocked it out instead. After it got tamed I picked it up and went home. Akisa fell in love with the snail. Oh, it's beautiful. Day 13, I went out looking for Tenacious Rex or Spino and I came across one of the world bosses. Oh god that's Tempest. I am not ready to take him on and he looks so cool though. A little bit later then I found a zombie Therisino which would be awesome to have for some resources. There was unfortunately a tenacious Carno nearby who was a big nuisance to me. I went over to the Therisino and gave him his favorite meal which was brains. The Carno intervened and he got me stuck in his face and oddly enough he killed me off my mount. <laughs> I lost my backpack and my griffin, oh my god. I got back to my body. And I grabbed my stuff, then the griffin flew into combat, and he got me killed. And the griffin got killed because he was a dumbass. I brought back my spino and it was time to do a big f murder. I took out my rage on the dinos in the area out of the frustration how bad I am at this game. If this video gets 4k likes, I will do a hardcore 100 days on the island. Time to get the new griffin. I went over to the griffin's car to trank out a pretty high level griffin A12. My spino almost killed it when trying to protect me. Then as soon as I tamed the griffin I used it to tame myself a tenacious one which is basically an alpha. A little bit later back at base I took my zombie Thersena out for a spin to form some easy peasy wood which we could turn into charcoal in the mammoth. Day 14. When I was swooping around with the griffin, I did in fact come across this tenacious rex. A conflagrant even, which would be amazing to taking down an ancient mini boss with. I proceeded to knock it out on the top of my griffin, giving it a tonic and a prime and leaving it up to be tamed. Since I now had the tenacious rex, it was finally time to try taking down our first ancient mini boss. The Rex did quite a lot of damage, but we managed thanks to the healing potion on the half bar. And yes, it will also heal your creatures if they are close by. When you kill one of these ancient mana bosses, they will drop something called an Insta Golden Cable, which can be used to tame more powerful creatures such as the Primal and the Giga Witch Sox. I went over to the area where I saw the Giga Witch Sox before. Then I started blasting him with arrows, knocking him out, shoving up some kibble, and then tamed him. I named him Roger. I don't know where all of these names are coming from. Day 15. I went over to check if any good griffins had spawned in the area, where I found one of them before, but there was another tenacious rex in the area instead. So I proceeded to knock it out. I gave it some prime and a tonic to wash it out, and then she was my new best friend. Back at base, I threw out both of my rexes and let them do the dirty. Day 16, I started making some finishing touches to the base, it just felt a little bit too open. So 
some babies finally hatched and got automatically picked up by the soul terminal, so I threw them out and left them be. In the middle of me building, a Mr. Fist just spawned right beneath my base, and that made me extremely worried. I didn't want to continue listening to the song, which means that the world boss is close, so I tried baiting him further down the mountain. The danger was finally gone, so I could actually relax. On day 17, I continued on upgrading and fortifying my base, which lasted until the evening, and then I put down one of these S plus hatcheries, so I could incubate the eggs faster. On day 18, now we're getting somewhere, I had my eyes on a primal griffin I could tame up, I netgunned it, knocked it out and fed and tamed it with golden kibble. Not too far away I went for one of these conflagrant dodos which will poop out gasoline. I was flying around and I came across one of these tenacious glacial gigas. They are really tough and shams really hard. Ouch. It took me many arrows to knock it out. I gave it an instant golden cable and it was mine. I took the Giga home so I could breed it with the other Giga I had. Know this, if you breed a female tenacious Giga with the normal variant, you will get the beta creature. This is not as strong as a tenacious, but like, it's in between a tenacious and a regular. I took one of the Rexes out to see if I could take down the Thanksgiving turkey. Since I was gonna need a lot of insta golden cable, I had to kill a lot of ancient mini bosses. Because one of my hidden tasks was taming all of the primals. A little bit later I came across a primeval and these can be killed for its energy or tamed to sacrifice to craft your own boss creature. The energy however is used for making a satiating nutriment which is a cable for taming primevals. Then I found a primeval phoenix. I wanted to gather the energy from it and I didn't realize it was barbecuing me to death so I died. I flew back to my Rex and picked him up. He did in fact kill the phoenix on its own, so I got the energy just by rendering them both. Day 19. I saw a dubstep penguin which was listening to music, so I picked it up to safe area and then went ahead and tried knocking it out. I fed it and I tamed it. Then I started taming one of these primal Argentavis with some swag. It's the second primal I need for my task. Day 20, starting out on this day by painting my base a tiny bit to make it a bit more fresh. Then I went over and killed a primeval dragon for its energy and an ancient for kibble. Day 21, I started out on the next day by taming myself a female primal griffin so I could breed it with the male back at base and have an imprinted baby. I took the Theracena out for some farming because I was lacking on rare flowers and mushrooms. Back at base, I figured that we can use the conflagrant doed as a grinder so I had to make one. I had to take Neon out to farm some stone because I couldn't make any more spark powder. Day 22, I made one of these blueprint creators from the Pugnacia mod, but I didn't really fancy it that much so I used the upgrade station mod which is very OP. What you basically do is that you put the item into the thingamajiggy and it will make it a blueprint. So I hatched more eggs and I threw out more babies to grow up. I would eventually need an S plus mutator to speed things up a bit. I went to the river where I farmed stone with neon, because there was a dodorex here and that energy from the dodorex would be nice having so I can make myself a boss creature eventually. I figured it was actually finally time to try to take on a world boss so we could get some tech ramps. Me and Mr. Fister were having a brawl for a very long time, but I finally took him down and I unlocked the tech grams. You get 250 elements from killing world bosses and a few tier 2 saddles for your primevals. Day 23. It was finally time to put down some tech structures like a replicator generator, scanner and then eventually a mutator to speed up the process of breeding. I took a few days of break and now it's day 28, ah, so today we were gonna take out my second world boss today. It was Curium's little plant friend, not gonna lie, but it was a very horrifying looking plant. I lost a few rexes in the process, but it's okay. 
Every time you kill the plant boss, it will drop his own crop pot and pugnacious seeds, which produces berries ridiculously fast. And you also get some volcanic gear. I even killed my second plant boss today. Day 29. I started taming my first unicorn today that we could use to get some XP boost poop. Delicious. After I got the unicorn, I basically AFK'd until day 40. I let the babies grow up and I was gathering more narca bears from the crops, etc. I spent the whole day 40 redesigning the base because I wasn't too happy about the placement in the center. Day 41. Akisa had revealed my second task I had to do, and that was taming all of the prime Not evils. Sure which one but none of the prime evils had spawned yet, so I had to go for some primals. Just before the day was about to end, I tamed myself a primal gorilla, and that marks it as the third primal. Day 42 was about finishing my primal task. So next up was a primal stego. So I knocked it out, I fed it, and tamed it. And what's so special about the primal stegos is that you can use them to farm one specific berry type for two and a half harvesting by choosing its type in its radial menu. Next up, it was time to tame one of these viking primal thylas, Skålpoje. He went down quickly, but there was a rock golem that was nearby, so I had to get rid of him quickly. And not too far away in the sand dunes of Crystal Isles, there was a max level primal basilisk I could tame. With this tame, I'm gonna be very close to finishing off my first task. Then I scanned and went for a primal centipede, which can passively produce all of the artifacts when I wander. Not too far away, there was a primal spino, so I just knocked it out and tamed it. There it is. To end day 42, I tamed a primal terror bird underneath the base with a scorpion. Scorpion actually does some neat torpor, damn. If you didn't know, the primal terror bird can also fly. That is very unique. So I named her Flappy Bird because it kind of flaps with its little wings. Day 43. The hunt was being continued on and I had three primal creatures left to tame. Luckily, the primal trike and the carcanos I was missing were fighting each other, so I tamed them both up super easily. I was gonna try and take out one of the world bosses, and it's for Scarnet the Scorpion. My Rexes got knocked out within the first second, so I gave up. I had to retreat since my Rexes were incapable of handling that torpor, so that only means I have to get the Dino that has a lot of torpor, like a Gigabit Socks. Day 44. I was so close to being finished with one of my tasks, so I went over to the ocean to look for the last primal, which was a Dunkleosteus. I ended the day by picking up some few grown up beta gigas, which should be sufficient for doing most of the world bosses now. Day 45. I wanted to try out the Rexes on another world boss, but it kind of felt like they were struggling a bit as I only saw numbers, and then there was a lot of deaths. The Rexes could have probably made it, but it would take a long time, so I went back to base to grab some Gigas, and then we killed it without any issues. Since the Titanosaur boss was nearby, we took him out also. After killing all of those world bosses, I had enough element to make myself an S plus teleporter, so no more flying back and forth to the base. At the end of the day, I started making myself some satiating nutriment, which is basically cable for taming primevals. Day 46, a new day of possibilities. I had my first primeval to tame today since it was one of my tasks to do. I shot once and I tried avoiding all of his flaming ball attacks since they were a great danger to me. I knocked it out finally, I gave it the satiating cable and I tamed it. 
Once you tame them, it also comes with its own saddle. I tested it out on a Thanksgiving dinner, and you know what? It wasn't too bad. The Thanksgiving dinner was definitely getting well done at this point. Very juicy. Day 47. It was time to get another primeval down, and this time it was the monkey. Sure. Monkey. Smush. Monkey smush. The monkey wasn't too bad, but I was quite disappointed that you can throw rocks with him like it does when you fight him on a vanilla arc. 67. Day 48 started out by going to the ab area of Crystallize to get our third primeval, which was the creepy spooper. I wanted to make myself a Spinebreaker sacrifice, but I was missing a lot of the primeval energies, so I had to go out and kill a few primevals. Here you can see the remaining ingredients I'm missing. Day 49. Since I wanted my own Spinebreaker, I had to go out and tame a primeval so I could use it as a sacrifice. I was flying around for a bit and I found a max level space whale, so I tamed it. I was quite curious how fast it could actually fly in this mod. This is absurd. Oh my god, it's so fast. Jesus. So enough messing around, I wanted to eventually make my own Spinebreaker, so I went and killed the last two primevals. Now we got all it is said that the Spinebreaker is the strongest team in Pagnesia, but we'll see about that. Oh. Okay, so this is a kind of like a rundown what I've done so far. We are basically ready for making our first Spinebreaker. Well, we have to take down a Spinebreaker, but I upgraded the base, you know. Uh, it has this very cool center bit now. It's it's highly um, updated, I guess. I've completed taming all of the primals. Now I'm off to primevals. I'm missing five more primevals. We're on day 50, so... Yeah, and I'm growing up like a Rex army that will be used for... Um, sacrificing them, I guess? Day 51. Me and Akisa wanted to have a race to see who was the fastest to the green obelisk. Uh, yep. Yep, you, you be gone. Backing me. Akisa said she wanted these prodigious leeches on Pagnesia, oh, so I went out looking for high level oh, there ones. It is. Hello, my dad now? <sighs> Ew. I was basically Ooh. inspecting the leech and I felt disgusted. Day 52. It was time to try going out and killing a Skarner since I haven't done that yet. The Rexes fell asleep like before. But nevertheless, I killed Skarner either way. I wanted to try taking out this cute Mothra. It was very beautiful but deadly since it does reflective damage. But we killed it without any problems though. Nice. So. Oh, there we go, boots. boots, boots. Day 53. It's time to tame one of these primeval Dodorexes. Once I tame this primeval, I'm gonna have four left to tame. Day 54. It was finally time to kill one of these spinebreakers, but Akisa wanted to try out her dubstep penguin against it first. It was pretty hilarious. We found an easier target to try to kill, which was the plant boss. One of my gigas was zooming around the whole leg and blasting off like <laughs> Team Rocket. I'll be back. <laughs> okay, enough messing around. Now we really have to go and kill the Spinebreaker for that item he drops. I sent some dinos on him oh, and he instantly died. killed the Thames. But yeah. Nonetheless, we did kill him. Peck, 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 peck. Ouchie! Oops. Oh. Day 55. Okay, it was okay. finally time to sacrifice the monkey so I could get oh. my own spinebreaker. Yeah, it like materialized on top of me. Day 58. I wanted to get myself the next primeval, which was a manticore. But as yeah, weird as it sounds, it spawns in the ocean on Crystal Isles. Then on day 59, I went for another primeval, which was a greenish dragon. 
I knocked it out, fed and tamed it. I named it Dwagon because I think it's very cute. It's definitely the old model from Ark because I don't think it sounds like that on Ark at the moment. I had to gather a few more energies so I can make more primeval kibble. So I had to go out and kill a few primevals. It was day 60 and I found myself a zombie titanosaur with 51 mil torpor. I wanted to see if I could torp it out with the doom stick I got from Skarner. It did not quite work out as intended. <laughs> I was a smart noodle and went on my griffin to torp him out instead. See chat, sometimes I can be smart. So I knocked him out and gave it some major bears which would take a while to tame up but it's fine. I went for the tenacious death worm I saw from before so I could play around with it. It's quite unique since they are usually not tameable or rideable. Day 61, I went over and picked up the titanosaur and went zooming with him. Day 62, me and Akisa took the gigas out to fight the spinebreaker so I could have a second one. So I started making the spinebreaker sacrifice, but I was missing the tame, so I had to go out and look for a new primeval. I found a broodmother in the ocean, so I tamed it because it was gonna be used as a sacrifice. Day 63 started with one of the world bosses spawned in our base. I had to call Akiza to come and help me kill it. Then it was time to sacrifice the Broodmar so I could make myself a new Spinebreaker. I gave the Spinebreakers the ability to breed through the Mutator. I didn't want to sit and wait for him to just stay to Spinebreaker so I made a propagator so they would drop eggs instead. Day 64 started out with me going out and fighting the Tempest to bring our brain. It's a very cool magical Leopleurodon, that's for sure. A bit later I wanted to kill the Kraken as well since he was in the area. It has some very wriggly tentacles though. When you kill the bosses, they drop quite a lot of candy that you can eat for improved movement speed. The Spinebreaker finally pooped out the baby. Every time you breed the Spinebreakers and get the baby, it comes with its own sad. Day 69. Nice. I was raising quite a lot of Spinebreakers and Gigas for all of the boss fights we we're gonna have eventually. Also, what are we doing with these leeches here? They're just laying there. I need more leeches! I don't got a female leech! I tamed up my last prime evil I needed for my task, and with my usual luck, the taming efficiency got ruined by something just because I tamed it. It was finally time for us to take down the Pugnacia bosses, so I had to place down one of these arenas in order to spawn them. Day 70, and now it was finally time to take down the first boss, which was the Brood Mommy. Look at the health going down. Oh my god, the lag! The lag was immense and I could barely see anything. Well, we did kill her and we got the next item that you need to summon the next boss. Day 71. We started out the day by fighting the next boss, which was Megapithecus. And good lord, he hit like a truck. Day 72, I managed to find myself another tenacious giga which sucks, so I poked at it once and it went down super easy. Now, since I had a pair of tenacious giga, I could breed both of these together and get a boss killer. It was time to fight the third boss, which was a massive dragon. And I mean, it was massive, but we killed it without any problems. Every time you kill one of these bosses, they will drop a sacrifice that you can use to get your own world boss. Day 74, I started preparing for the fourth boss, which was a manticore. We killed it nonetheless, without any hiccups. 
It was day 75, and now it was time to finally end Pugnacious' story with this last boss, the oversized Tapopotamus. I threw out all of the dinos we were going to use for this epic boss battle. This boss will spawn in other world bosses when you fight him and we were so unlucky because he literally spawned a spinebreaker on top of the dinos and it killed them with his orb attack. Luckily I had my pocket giga left on me to fight the hippo on my own and I went down victorious. Oh. That killed me. I just killed it. Oh, Agisa gave me the final hidden task which was basically making all of the bosses so I had to farm quite a lot for that. So I wanted more sacrifices so I didn't have to farm all the primevals to make them. So we took down the bosses again until day 85. So on day 85 I tamed up all of the sacrifices I needed for the last task. There we go. That's all of the sacrifices. That's the quite the speed the sea of spoopers and monkeys. <laughs> the east the east is to tame, by the way. Day 88. I've had so many people keep asking me if I'm Swedish, so I made a couple of paintings to prove that I am sweet by painting the flag. I am not good at painting, as you can see. It was so. now day 90 and it was this time to sacrifice all of these monkeys and spoopers to make myself some tame bosses. And then all of the tasks are done, so I don't have to worry about that. It was now day 96 and it was time to defeat Tiamat the five-headed dragon. And then I sent the spinebreakers in to fight it. Oh here we go. I'm scared. I'm scared. Dude attack him instead of standing here. Did not look good. Oh, a spider that. Yeah. And it has trouble. It's because it has so much melee. Gonna die! Oh my god, we just killed it. Woo! Woohoo! Oh my god, we just killed it. Unbelievable. Then it was day 100, and it was time to defeat the world serpent German Gunder. It didn't go as planned, but as he died, he took down a few other creatures. It wasn't anything special about the end, so I'm pretty sorry for that. But hey, I did beat it in fact. But nonetheless, the mod is pretty easy and you can easily pull off killing the last Pugnacia boss is probably around day 20 or so. Well, Akisa did promise to build something for us and here is the end result. I'm 
sorry if the editing felt a bit sloppy on this video, but I only edited this in 3 days. If you want to give me a few advices on what to do for my next video, don't hold it to yourself. Comment, like and subscribe if you did in fact enjoy the video. I also have a discord now if you were looking to come in contact with me about my content and etc. Oh,